Hey there, this InDesign lesson is part of an in-depth course on learning and mastering InDesign. These are a few of my university students' magazines. After learning from this tutorial, learn even more about creating effective editorial and promotional content by clicking on the discount coupon in the description. Start designing and selling online books, magazines, and more. Thanks, and we'll see you in the course. There are a couple ways to place and flow text in InDesign. Go ahead and open up InDesign, go to File, New, Document, and the default settings of letter size are fine, portrait orientation, so just click OK. If we wanted to add a title, say to a feature story, we can just click the Type tool on the Tools panel over here, and just click and drag out, and then I'll type something in. Feature story title. And so by default, if I click and drag over it, or a shortcut, is Control A on the PC or Command A on the Mac, and that will select all the text as long as you have a cursor blinking in there in the text uh, box. Now you can change the size he up here. So if you go to Window, and then make sure Control's checked if you don't see that. And so you can make the text larger, and you can format. We'll be going over the different ways to format the text as well. But a shortcut. Let's just say it was at 12 point by default, and you just want it to make it larger to go across. Uh, the entire page here, margin to margin. What you could do, notice that this text frame, if I click and drag around, it moves around it like an object as if it was a shape or a photo. But if I put in the corner here and click and drag the corner to resize it, the text doesn't resize with it. What you can do is hold down Control on the PC or Command on the Mac and click and drag it out, and it will resize uh, the font and it can distort it vertically or horizontally, so hold shift to maintain the original text proportion from width to height. And so then it uh, quickly will go across there and it'll align with the rest of the text, so that's pretty useful. Another thing you can try is, let's just say this was, right now it's 56.28 points, I should say it was say 24. Select it all, and if you hold down control on the PC or Command on the Mac, and press the left and right greater than or less than symbols on the keyboard, uh, you'll see it makes the text and the actual text box smaller. That's just holding Control on the PC or Command on the Mac. If you add Shift to it, so hold Control, Shift on the PC, Command, Shift on the Mac, it will only resize the text. So that's a shortcut. And if you Hold down Alt on the PC, Option on the Mac, as well as Control on the PC, Command on the Mac. It will make the text frame, and it just jumps up much more quickly. And you can hold all three down, Shift, Control, Alt on the PC, Shift, Command, Option on the Mac. And it makes just the text larger, but it jumps up in sizes, intervals you can see of 10. So it goes from 28 points to 38 points, to 48, 58, and so on. So I would say the default is just control shift on the PC or command shift on the Mac. And it just goes in intervals of two points, as you can see there. And if we need to adjust it up here and just make it something else, we can always type it in up there. So that's inserting text as far as pull quotes or sidebars or titles and other elements that we're just going to type the text in. Usually when you're placing in a story, though, uh, you will place it from a Word document or some other kind of word processor document. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to click and drag that off to the side. Go to File, Place, and then find under the Support Files document and just choose Alice in Wonderland Book Times. Uh, this is just public domain text, so we can use it. And you'll notice it turns the cursor into a preview of the beginning of the text. And if I just click and let go, it places the text, but you'll see way down here there's a little red cross. That means there's more text to place, but it hasn't placed it. If I go to the Pages panel, you'll see here we only have one page in this document right now. So I'm going to go Edit Undo. And so this is as if we went to file place again. And this time, I'm going to hold shift. And you'll notice it adds that little arrow to the cursor icon. So holding shift, click. Now what it does is it places the entire text by adding more 
pages. So this is now a 53 page document instead of a one page document because I held shift as I placed it in it just placed the entire uh, Word document into InDesign. So I'm going to press control Z on the PC or command Z on the Mac and that will be the same thing as edit undo. And so let's just say we wanted to place this in the columns though. Well what you can do is go to layout margins and columns if we didn't add these when we created a new document and where columns number let's just do four columns with a one pica gutter and if I just click and let go all it does is it places it into this column so then I would need to click this red cross icon at the bottom click it in the next one click red cross and you could also say you wanted one to go across two you could do that or you could just click and drag either way but you'll notice it's not adding more pages because we're not holding shift. So now I need to create a new page. And this one doesn't have margins and columns, so you need to add those to that. Let's just say, let's do five on that one. And if you go back here, click the red cross, go to page two, click that in. And so it flows it through. The problem is, it just, you know, we keep having to do this. What you can do is hold shift then it will flow all the way through. But on the third page, it doesn't have any columns because we didn't add any by default when we created the, the new document. So in our projects in this course, we'll be creating uh, new text boxes, new text frames, and we'll also be flowing text in different ways. But one design principle we want to look at is alignment. So we do want text to be aligned. So if I zoom in here, and this is just one way to place a text, we'll go over another way in a bit. If you see rulers up here, if you don't, just go to view, show rulers. And so if I hover over the ruler and click and drag down and just align this along the bottom of that text in the second column there, and just use the arrows on the keyboard or click and drag, and we want to align all of this text with that second column there. So it's all aligned. I'm going to just resize this a little bit. There we go. So you'll notice these columns, let me use the hand to move over here. And this is the technically the title we'd put at the top, but so now this text is all aligned. The difference between a professional publication and uh, an unprofessional publication, one of the things is things like aligned text, spelling errors, of course, overall design aesthetics, but aligning text is one thing that people getting into editorial design at the beginning really need to pay attention to. So um, that's one way to place in text and align it. I'm going to go ahead and delete all these pages. Or actually, let's just close this out. Go to File New again, File New Document. Let's just have one column, so not like four columns or anything like that. This is another way to create columns, though. So go to File, Place, and we'll do Alice in Wonderland Book Times. And this one I'm going to click and drag out like so. And if we wanted the text to flow again into another page, we could click there. But this example, I just want to show you how to create some columns without adding columns up here under layout margins and columns. So this is selected. If you look up at the top here on the control panel, this says one. If you hover over, it'll say number of columns and the gutter. If I click up there to make it two, now we have two columns over here, and these are automatically aligned. The gutter, we can make the gutter larger. You'll see it gets larger over here, so now it's over two pikas, and so on. So you can create multiple columns and move this around as one text frame instead of using just the column guides on the page. So that's two ways of uh, having columns in a, in a layout. So some of these other options over here, I'll show you what these do. I'm going to use the type tool over here, click in somewhere, press Control or Command A to select it all, and then I'm going to hold Shift and click here. So I'm deleting all the other text that we don't see, and I just want to make it uneven, so I'll show you what this does. So this left-hand side is obviously longer than this side. The text ends right there. If you see over here, if you hover over, this says Balance Columns, and then unbalanced columns. Well, unbalanced is the default in that text is going to go all the way to the bottom of that text frame, and that's going to start back up here. 
if you do balance columns, then it makes it symmetrical as best it can. So it's a little bit unaligned at the bottom, but I'm just going to try to balance it there. If you hover at the top here where it says align top, by default, it's starting at the top, of course. If you click the one below it, align center, what that is going to do is it's going to center it vertically. So there's some space above it and below it. And if you go to align bottom, it's just going to align to the bottom, of course. And then the fourth one is justify vertically, kind of like we're going to get into left and right justification, full justification, like in magazine layouts. Uh, but instead of horizontally justifying it, it's vertically justifying it. So it's kind of stretching it out so that it goes up to the text frame and the bottom of the text frame. And you can also do fit frame to content right there. And that will just take the edge of the text frame and fit it to the column. So, so that's a couple ways of inserting text frames, whether we're placing Word documents or clicking and dragging to create a new text frame and two different ways of having columns in a feature story layout. We're also going to be getting into inserting pull quotes, wrapping text around images, and, and also more advanced formatting of feature story layouts and uh, text once it's in the frame. One more thing I want to show you really quick is if you go to File Place and then just go to Alice in Wonderland Book Font, I have a font in here that I don't have on the local computer. So on my, the MacBook that I have, it has these fonts. So where I have the Word document, bring it over to uh, the PC desktop, it does not have it. So I did this on purpose to show you if you ever see text that, say, uh, someone sends you to place into an editorial layout and it has this background or it gives you that error, what that is saying is you don't have that font on your computer. So if you look up here when it's in those brackets, it's just saying, hey, I don't have that font. It's not going to print out right. So if I press Control or Command A, it's going to select it all and just change it to a comparable font. So Helvetica, we could change it to Arial. And then it'll be fine. So just a tip uh, to look out for uh, fonts that are missing uh, from Word documents that people send you. Hey there! This InDesign lesson is part of an in-depth course on learning and mastering InDesign. These are a few of my university students' magazines. After learning from this tutorial, learn even more about creating effective editorial and promotional content by clicking on the discount coupon in the description. Start designing and selling online books, magazines, and more. Thanks, and we'll see you in the course.